Yeah, we've started to get some hate lately. When we started Jubilee Media two years ago, it was maybe 350k subscribers. Now that we're about to hit 4 million, I think it's only recently we've realized how powerful our platform has become. We've dropped the ball a few times, but we also want to be as honest and transparent with you guys as possible, show some new Jubilee faces, address some issues. So enjoy the episode and see you guys on the other side. We make what, like three videos a week, so over the course of a year, it's like 150 to 200 videos. So obviously, we're not going to make every single video like to the standard that you know we we have for ourselves. But we should. We should. It's just more likely than not, we're not going to hit it out of the park every time. We just try to go even harder the next time. I just know there are videos that I feel like don't represent those communities well or represent the issues well. We may be cave to just like it's better than nothing, but we are trying to help represent a community and an issue and we should always hold ourselves up to a bar, even if that means not making quota. There's probably what, five to 10% of the videos that we actually create, finish, spend all this money, time on, and we don't put out. That's also like part of the process that a lot of folks don't see and I'm pretty proud that we do still keep the bar pretty high. What I really want to double down on for our team is like, we're 15 people, but we literally affect like millions of people. Like people look to us to be the ones who like represent these people well. So we just have to realize like the accountability we have. I think we do feel, <laughs> at least I do. I'm like, you know, I feel the 3.6 million subscribers that we have like on my back as I go to sleep at night. I think if this prompt was like, is there a video on our channel that I don't like? Yeah, absolutely. I think I've learned from the first video I put out that there's like someone out there who's relating to it, who's disliking it and, and loving it or whatever. And so it's my job to like make something that can uh, touch people in the right ways. Oh, Aaron's going back and forth here. I don't know. I could <laughs> honestly live between these two. Mm. I originally went to somewhat disagree because if we really were going with everything our audience dictated, like the, on a views, I don't think we would be making as much LGBT content as we do. I know I want to make a thing about Polynesians, but I know in my head, I'm like, ah, oh, but would the audience show up? Would the views be too low? And I see that actually affecting the choices I make. I think our channel can be so much more colorful with like the kind of content that we're creating. Um, and I think we're slowly getting there and like doing and going out there and doing different things. I don't think I'm fit to direct like a spectrum Latino. You know what I mean? Like, do all Latinos think the same? I feel like I'd rather be working on something else that relates to like my history or my experience. But aren't we always gonna be underprepared to like address lots of topics? I don't know that we should not do a topic because you're not Latino, right? That, that you feel like maybe you could be a little bit more prepared because you don't have all that background and experience. But if we sort of did everything that way, there's probably a lot that we probably, you know, wouldn't be able to touch. Maybe it's like the, the business hat. I don't know what it is, but I, I feel like all these people who are entrusting us, who want to see content from us, our entire job is to figure out how we take the mission we have and serve it in a way to them that like they care about. I don't think that means they get to like guide our company, but I do think that they should be top of mind in who we're serving. It's getting hot in here. It is. <laughs> a little bit of air. Both metaphorically and literally. Yeah. If you walk, you get a little air. It is our responsibility to protect everyone in our past. Three, two, one. I didn't register the prompt fully, sorry. It's not like anything like tension or anything. I know you're gonna edit it to make it seem like I was thinking about it, but I wasn't thinking about it. It's our job, okay? 
Yeah, I think it's our responsibility to do all that we can to protect them and whatever that means on a case-to-case -case basis, but can we always protect them? No, because I mean, we put them on the internet and millions of people watch it and we don't necessarily, we can't protect them from everything. I can't control what you have on your Instagram or what you said on set. I will make sure it's as accurately portrayed as possible. But I've had a lot of cast members who ask me before going on the show, like, oh, I'm just worried about you make like looking bad in the edit. And I said, we'll put it this way. It's on you to conduct yourself in the most mature, thoughtful manner possible, and I will honor that, but if you come acting in a certain way, I'm not gonna try to fix that for you. A lot of times we're actually erring on the side of trying to make people look better because we do fear for them, right? Like we do wanna protect them. We try really hard to make things feel balanced, and I think it's why our edits are so difficult and take so long. The comments though, we don't really have control over the comments which is something we talk about often. Sometimes they're brutal to us, like, you know what I mean? And we tell our castmates not to read the comments, but you gonna read the comments, like. <laughs> The reason I want people to comment and like if they say they're the wrong things and they attack people, we talk about like white supremacists and this and that. We don't know who those people are unless we're opening up the floodgates for them to comment and you know what I mean? And so that we can know their name. We know an account. I don't know we though. We can get to them. Because it's literally just you're behind a computer screen. There is no accountability for the commenter. But I think if we shut them off, like, that's ignoring the real problem. I mean, for us, like, we might be able to look at those comments and be like, oh, these people are racist, or these people have this problem, and we might be prepared to handle that, but, like, the cast that are in our videos, like, they're normal people, they don't work in media, they're like, why are all these people, like, saying I should die? Do you know what I mean? So I feel like with that, we, it's, it's a tricky balance. So I agree, actually, with, like, keeping people accountable, but if people are sending, like, personal addresses and stuff and that would you do you feel like that no that's why i moved a little bit okay. honestly because like the personal information like harm and physical harm like that's that's different for me it's literally just where someone's like safety is at play <laughs> or when uh there's just no insight it's just pure attack what's an example though of like an attack so youtube has something already like even without us doing anything called like potentially flagged comments if you go read them, you will know what I'm talking about. <laughs> it, is, it is like, I hate this mother effer, I'm gonna like, kill them, like, oh, like kill I hope they rats. die. Like, like that's not a valuable comment. I'm sure the one that we're all thinking about is Erin from the vegan episode, right? Because that's the one time we've ever taken down comments anywhere, and that was on Instagram. This was like a big discussion within our team because we all kind of disagreed about like, should we do that? Because we're against censorship, obviously. We want people to like, be able to articulate their opinion in a safe way. But in that particular scenario, it seemed like there was personal information about her workplace or even home that people were starting to share that we said, wow, if this amounts to like physical violence in some way, we're responsible for that. For the Instagram post, we turned off all comments. Yes. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we shut down conversation. Do you think we should have? It would have taken a lot more work, but we could have gone and sort of taken down things that were like explicitly. Yeah. So that's where I, I think maybe the, the audience felt a little bit more, like we don't even trust them. You know, no, like I think that's Nobody fair. can say anything. Well, we didn't trust them at that point. They were, yeah. you know, like I feel like we had reason to not trust. And I mean, there were plenty of other places they could have had dialogue. Like I don't understand why we're getting so much heat for turning off comments on one post. We want to do things the right way and we want to be authentic to our audience. Frankly, like we disagree with the way that she handled herself on set, but she chose to do well, that. I don't, I don't disagree okay. with that. Sorry, <laughs> sorry. I don't. Let me ask you for a moment. I think the way she was acting on set was fine. I mean, it's a game. That's what people don't realize, you know what I mean? She wasn't calling him names or anything. She was just saying he's not vegan, um, which I think is hilarious. So, but It's funny, I, yes. <laughs> I don't think that she was being like disrespectful or like, rude. I think like the way it was perceived, absolutely. Just because I've been an odd man out, I think like it is very competitive. You're like trying to find the person. There are people who should not have been in our cast. Three, two, one, go.
If you start to discriminate too much of who comes on set or not, and you just start having all goody goody two shoes people on set who are very agreeable, and you don't have the assertive people, you don't have the conflict that causes the interesting things to happen. On a practical level, you can't predict what people are going to do when you put them in like a situation like this that can be kind of a pressure cooker. People are that have surprised me who have come off very mellow in a phone call and the second you put them in an environment like middle ground or spectrum or odd man out, a whole nother side of them comes out that even surprises them. I also recognize that there is value in taking a risk with someone who might be a little bit unpredictable but has something really strong to say and is passionate. Everybody I put in, I've believed in that. Did some people not give me what I was hoping? Sure. but. I hesitate with the word of should I never have included them in the first place, like with that idea. Looking in retrospect is how I, how I answer this question. Let's just take middle ground for example. The whole point of middle ground is to show the world how to have a conversation with opposing sides. So for me, a person that would be a poor choice to have in that video is someone who's constantly cutting people off, not letting anyone else talk, just like yelling, you know, like that's the ex extreme example. The fact that they show up, yeah. the two opposing sides, is like the start of the conversation. So I think that's also like a great example, the fact that they showed they up. They even show up, yeah. And I also think that the way that we dialogue shouldn't be controlled. I think like sometimes we get angry, you know what I mean? And like it, conversations look ugly, but at the end of the day, someone's walking away more informed than they did before. And so I don't want to like control the way people like dialogue, I don't know. People aren't seeing the air between those moments of when we're taking breaks and chatting with each other, when we're checking in with each other. Those aren't in the edit because we're not going to watch two hours of people chilling as we redo the lighting. There have been times I've been incredibly emotionally taxed, like I've pulled multiple all-nighters. But I feel like the more I've taken on, the more I've found ways to just be more effective and take care of myself. We're in this space, this digital space, but we're artists. We're sen I'm sensitive about the work that I create, and to see outside yourself is exhausting, it's tiring. But at the same time, I love my job, I love being an artist, and I wouldn't change it for the world. I base my self-worth a lot off what I do. And so if a video doesn't do well, or it's not hitting the bar I expect of it, as far as the quality of the video, and maybe not always the views, I look at that as a reflection of my abilities, that I did the best I can, and that wasn't good enough. And so that can be difficult to deal with mentally. The hardest part is that I recognize, for myself, my purpose is to serve our community and to serve people and I don't always feel like I'm doing that well. And so that can be a little difficult to swallow when I think I've missed the bar and I'm letting this community down and I'm letting people down. I just want to do right by our communities and our people and help talk about our struggles and what we're going through in the world and I get frustrated when I don't do that right and I expect myself to do better, and so. I think like the directors, I totally understand how you guys are standing over there in terms of like your self-worth. We look at you guys and we're like, you guys are doing like so far like above and beyond like what we could ever ex expect or like hope for. So I don't want you guys to be on Strongly Agree forever, but um, yeah, just want you guys to know that we see you guys. The reason I stand here is like, I'm not gonna get emotional now. Um, for me, it's not even about videos or about like our performance. It's really about people, and it's hard. Like when I see you guys struggling and stay up late and like killing yourselves making these videos, it's like I'm both incredibly proud, but I'm also it hurts me because I'm like, oh, are we loving and honoring our directors? Are we loving and honoring our team? I feel accountable for everyone. Like, we need to pay, feed, insure all these people because they're our families that we want people to grow. And how do you balance those things and how do we just get everyone to the level where we're thriving? It's emotionally exhausting in some ways, but I also think it's like the greatest honor that I have. We're trying to build something great and we're getting better. Bring it in.
Hey guys, thank you so much for watching that episode of Spectrum. It was a little weird to direct that. Yeah. Uh, I don't know, it's just like very meta. I think it was really good for us, honestly. Yeah, I think so. It's team. good to talk about it openly too. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, nothing hidden behind closed doors. I feel like I said some idiotic things, but I'm gonna regret later. <laughs> it's okay. Be nice to Ian in the comments. <laughs> yeah, be nice. All right, thank you guys. We'll see you next time. Bye.